Today, we're going to discuss how to survive the stress of a slap tear diagnosis and the injury journey in itself. This is really, really important. We're going to take a deep dive into sort of the psychology and mentality around injury rehab and how it plays a major role in your potential for recovery. Uh, I've got my good friend, Phil White from Phil White Physio joining again. This is going to be a good one for anyone dealing with injury at the moment. Welcome to the Unity Gym podcast brought to you by VPA Australia, our trusted supplement source since day one. As VPA sponsored athletes, we're excited to offer you a special 10% discount on their premium supplements available worldwide. Just use our discount code listed in the episode description. Today's episode is also sponsored by the Slap Tear Rehab Blueprint. If you're overwhelmed by rehab tips on social media, our blueprint provides clear results-based methods to help you return to your favorite activities faster and stronger than surgery can get you there. Best of all, it's free. Grab it through the link in our description. If you'd like a personalized slap tear rehab program tailored to your needs and goals and support every step of the way via online one-on-one coaching, check out my slap tear rehab program. To get started, click the link in the description, create an account, complete a short pre-exercise questionnaire, and I'll welcome you on the inside. And remember, as Amazon affiliates, you can get all the equipment used in our videos and podcasts at competitive prices through our affiliate links in the description. Now let's dive into today's episode. How are you, Phil? Very well. Can you get stuck into more Slap Chat? Slap chat. <laughs> That's right. We're going deep into slap tears because we've had so many people comment on our slap tear content that went out on, on YouTube. Rad's first video just seemed to pique people's attention. And now it's become acutely evident that a lot of people deal with slap tears. I didn't realize it was so common. But then when we sat down and chatted, we've all, all three of us have had one. Uh, Phil's had one. I've had one. Rad's had two. And then I had this consult with a friend of mine who's completely unrelated. Uh, he was helping out on a business-related matter. And he, during the discussion, mentioned that he had just gotten through a slap tear that was really plaguing him for a while. So it clearly is very common. Yeah. Uh, and looking at our chat last week about like dysfunctional systems, like it's not surprising that it is such a common injury because yeah, when looking at sort of structurally balanced training, a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people don't have strong rotator cuff muscles. A lot of people don't have balance between their pushing and pulling muscles. A lot of people don't do any strength at all. So therefore their backup systems for stability in the shoulder put under more stress and that's, and your backup system for keeping the ball in the middle of the socket, as we talked about is the labrum. So yeah, I guess it's, it's, I guess it is surprising, but in many ways, like, you know, looking at the way that most people train or don't train. Yeah. There's, it's, yeah, it's I got a, I got a little anecdotal story about that. A couple of years back, I got a call from my mother who, God bless her, she's in her mid to late 60s now. I think she's 66 or 67. Don't just, mum, don't watch the thing and realize I don't know your age. Anyway, she <laughs> had done very little exercise for a long time. And her and my stepdad got invited to a wealthy friend's party and they have a tennis court at their house. And guess what they were doing all day? Playing tennis. My mum's never played tennis and neither is my stepdad. And they're both very, very dysfunctional in the shoulder. If you have a look at them, they're very slouched and, you know, classic old overweight people. And mum called me up and said, oh, I've buggered my shoulder. And when, when I finally saw her, she sent me some photos. It was like, oh, my God, the amount of swelling. And uh, like it was crazy. And it she, she ended up having to deal with this for like a year afterwards, you know, and it was this classic example of going and doing something that you're not capable or conditioned to do at all, which was to play like five games of tennis in a day when alcohol was involved and all this sort of thing. And, and then expect that your body is just going to perform and hold up really, really well, especially at an, at an older age. And so this is one typical way of injuring yourself, but there are many ways of injuring yourself in, yeah, in my, the, the too much too soon. It's just boom and bust. Like people do nothing and then too much of a thing. Yeah. And and another common way that we see a lot is that people who are well-trained like myself, go and take a break from training. And I've been at fault of doing this in the past, you know, where even if it's just like three or four weeks over, over a Christmas break and you decide, okay, I'm just going to take that time off, really enjoy the time with my family. I'm not going to hit the gym every day like I usually do. And then you return, say, so hypothetically scenario is that the whole of December or from mid December to mid January is like zero strength training. uh, And then mid-January you're starting to feel the effects of you know overindulgence over the Christmas period and you hit the gym with the same intensity maybe even more than you left it in mid-December the the year prior you know and expect that there's not going to be any 
issue with, with that and the amount or the rate that you lose conditioning when you abstain from exercise altogether is is quite profound and, and unexpected in most cases it certainly was for me and it, you can do yourself real real yeah. damage in that they're, case as well they're in the gym like i think you know when looking at like what causes slap tears like safe, strength training is one of the safer things you can do particularly if you're you know following a good program good technique Obviously, these things make a big difference, but you know, it, 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 often it's more of these. As your mum sort of experienced with the tennis, for me, it was mine was an acute injury of being barged by someone while playing sport. They ran into my shoulder and caused a tear. And like, you know, I just don't want people to get the idea that like it is, you know, it, it's so rarely doing like conventional gym strength training that does cause these issues, unless you've like dropped the weight or you've, you know, it. The most common time people injure themselves in the gym seems to be when they're just switched off from like finishing a set and then like do a bad unrack or a bad yeah kind of re-rack sort of thing so yeah certainly like taking time off and coming back in and going hard uh, not ideal but yeah gym gym training generally really safe for this sort of stuff it, it, very interestingly on that topic you know rad's two slap tears occurred from transitioning into calisthenics and doing a lot of inverted training so hand balancing plant training things like that that he just wasn't used to and didn't have the strength and muscle mass for that oh my camera just decided to take a, a dive it's all right i'm back sorry everybody and then my injuries both the worst shoulder injuries i've ever had the slap tear occurred doing a back, back backward somersault where you do a wall walk first so a couple of steps up the wall yeah. do a backward summy and land i was d doing that on on the on a dance floor in a nightclub and totally fine usually but didn't notice that there was a bulkhead above me uh i'd done it on the dance floor already prior to that and someone said oh, i'll do that again that was a cool move and and my feet clipped the bulkhead and i didn't get the rotation i needed so I sort of turned it into a backward handspring and uh, looked good at the time, but little did I know that landing on my hands and putting an enormous amount of pressure backwards like that because I'd gone quite high actually sort of partially dislocated my shoulder and, yeah, I found out about it in the morning when I tried to wake up and lift my arm. And then the second time that I did a really bad shoulder injury was this was just a rotator cuff tear, but I was actually doing a bench specialization program and I'd been training – bench for four days because i had just had a knee reconstruction from a soccer injury unrelated <laughs> and and uh i did a pb of 142.5 kilograms i don't know what that is in pounds but it's a, a decent amount of weight especially for someone who's not a you know strength athlete like a power lifter or something like that and i immediately got up and celebrated by grabbing the rig that i was training on for my bench press and doing a human flag and it just bizarrely you know uh, someone was filming so i was showing off yes i was showing off <laughs> and yeah just that doing the flag after maxing out on a bench press was obviously a really stupid idea and something that i'm not used to doing and yeah i just stuffed my shoulder overloaded yeah. it and tore one of the rotator cuff tendons and and you know, yeah, what Phil's saying there is is absolutely right. I'm digressing here a little bit, but I just want to state that yeah. all of our worst injuries have happened doing things that we're not really accustomed to doing, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I think like, I mean, just quickly on that, like when you said the bench specialization program, that ended up being the thing that actually, you know, helped my slap tear rehab the most. So interesting yeah. how like, yeah, I, but yeah, I didn't do it. I didn't jump into a, a wild like uh, calisthenics move at the back into that so a calisthenics that i never practiced <laughs> but I, I knew that i could yeah. do just by showing off but not straight yeah. after doing a max yeah. one rm bench press you know yeah it was but just so dumb it was so back dumb. to the topic of this conversation we've got we've got a comment from the on the youtube channel that we're looking at today right yeah, that's right. As with all of these shows, generally they're inspired by comments or feedback that we get from you guys. And this one came from actually one of our tribe members, Amaran. She is one of our online coaching clients. And she pointed out here that, you know, off the back of an earlier episode on slap tears that Phil and I, a discussion that we had, the most helpful tip you could give me was exercise the non-injured part of your body. Since that day, I am in a good mood. And this morning I had a PB in shoulder range of motion thawing thawing out has begun she suffered quite a severe slap tear and then it developed into like a frozen shoulder and so that's what mm. she's sort of referring to with the thawing has begun you know she's starting yeah. to get a bit more mobility but what i wanted to sort of emphasize here is just this part of the comment about training other areas because when you get an injury and and, and trust me i've had all sorts i've fallen off a horse and broken my back i've I dislocated my knee playing football i've almost cut my bloody um uh, uh ankle off on a mountain bike stack you know and, and had to go in for surgery for, for a few of these and have reconstructive surgery and things like that and phil's had lots of injuries 
one of the hardest things is the 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 mental beat down that you get you know from it the stress and 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 the you know what we're going to talk about today is so obvious in hindsight you know which is effectively just don't fixate on the the injured area you know follow the process that you've been given by the expert that's working with you to rehab it but use the opportunity to focus on something else so an, another area of your body you know in this case if you've got a shoulder slap tear then don't worry about pb'ing your bench press or your chin ups or your bent over rows for a while but you can focus on squats or deadlift yeah, or, you know, other areas of the body. Yeah. And obviously like, you know, that's great for like building strength and, and men, but the mental side of things with this is just my like biggest point of fascination over the years of studying the human body and the human experience, I guess. Like I was so obsessed with all the biomechanics and all the training variables and all that kind of stuff as I was starting out, but it's really been that like mental side of, okay, like, you know, it, it's fairly simple now to find like a, either on Google AI, a cheap, like a, a very affordable program, like the right thing to do, but actually doing it consistently is just the hardest thing. And I, I sort of like to think about this in, in terms of, I, I call it like the health spirals where, you know, when one thing's going well, it's so, it just adds so much positive momentum to everything else. So for example, when you're exercising well, you know, you're typically more physically tired. So sleep is better. Um, and when you're sleeping well, you manage your stress better. When you're managing your stress better, it's easier to make good food choices, which then makes your body feel really good, good energy levels, body composition is going in the direction you want. And then when you're doing that, you manage your mental health, you stay motivated, you get like that kind of, you know, positive mindset, which then makes it easier to keep exercising. And it just becomes this like positive health spiral where like, you just feel like, a, okay, crack the code, figured it out, you're gonna be healthy forever. But then suddenly like something can happen and then that positive momentum can be equally powerful, but in the opposite direction. And all that, like all that good stuff comes to a screeching halt when, you know, it might be a couple of bad nights sleep from a toddler waking up, for example, not really, uh... <laughs> Yep, something that I'm experiencing at the moment or, you know, something stressful happens and then you don't like stress at work, don't have time to do your training and then you start to feel like you're not making progress anymore and then, you know, that has that, that negative spiral which means you're not eating as well because you're kind of trying to distract yourself and, and then it's just, yeah, that equally positive, like equally powerful but negative momentum that can just really put the brakes on things. So I think one of the, and, you know, that might come from like the health space itself but it might be that, you know, you get a lot of positive momentum from being part of a group or a community and with your training is really, you know, a big part of your social life. And then when you stop, you become injured, suddenly you lose that. And then that has such a, like a, a compounding negative effect, or you can't like do your, if you have a shoulder injury, you can't like participate yeah, at work or in your other hobbies. Um, and that can just be such a negative downward spiral that it just becomes like your whole life, your whole identity is like overtaken by this shoulder injury. And it can be so devastating and hard to get back on the horse and feel like, motivated and good again so something definitely personal experience of like having times where i was very you know high level athlete and then other times where i've just completely fallen off the wagon been like what the hell i know that i want to be doing exercise i know that i enjoy exercise <laughs> why can't i bring myself to do it and i think this is where like when approaching any injury like how do we see it as an opportunity to work on something else to then like maintain that positive momentum yeah, hundred percent. I can speak from firsthand experience that there are certain people that can go it alone and and operate really well in isolation, working out in the gym on their own, as long as they've got a uh, a program to work on or whatever else. But for me personally, I don't. I'm not one of those people like my brother who just loves exercise, loves the thought of physical development. I do it because it helps my mental state and I do like the side effects. I certainly like how it makes me look and feel, but I operate much better in, in a tribe of people. My camera's done their little thing again. So sorry if you're watching, if you can still hear me, if you're listening, it'll come back on in a sec. The, the, you know, it's been a really big adjustment for me to get used to not having the Unity Gym Tribe. And still stay motivated and train, you know, and I'm certainly one of those people who enjoy exercise a lot more and get more out of exercise uh, when I'm training with a group of people, like-minded friends, you know, and I, certainly the best days that I've had training were in unity when we, we all used to get out and train together, you know, and that was just so much fun. And it was, it's hard to replicate that, you know, and I'm starting yeah. to, you know, become chummy with some of the other trainers and the locals at my local gym that I'm training in now. But, you know, since selling Unity and going fully online after COVID, we, 
yeah, that's something that I, I miss. You know, I really miss that. And and you're always Phil's always suggesting that I join a running club or do the you know get out there and do something like that. And I keep saying I will. I haven't done anything about it yet. <laughs> yeah, but I think it comes down to like there's there's so many factors that can get in the way of I guess your ideals to set up for exercise. But there's nothing more like you know non-negotiable than a significant injury. And if you do have a, an acute slap tear, and remember with slap tears, like, you know, people might have a scan and find they have like a, you know, low level slap tear, a bit of like degenerative tearing of the cartilage. And that might not necessarily mean you're disqualified from doing exercise in your upper body and strengthening your upper body. In fact, ideally it certainly won't. But, you know, if you're in that really acute phase when you've had a like acute traumatic injury, you've had this like, you know, scary Latin MRI report that makes it sound like everything's in end of the world. Like that, that really can just put the brakes on your approach to exercise and anything you try and do upper body wise is just too painful. So I think it's like those times that just become so key to like, I guess, zoom out of your body, like zoom out and look at your life and be like, okay, I can see how this has the potential to really undo a lot of that like positive momentum that I have. Like, how can I capture that? And like, how can I, sorry, quarantine that issue to just my shoulder and then not make it my entire focus and my entire being. Cause like when people do rehab programs where it's just like, you know, these couple of exercises on your shoulder and you're just like every day you're thinking like, Oh, does this hurt? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? It becomes just so unenjoyable and just so demoralizing for me, like that's always how I experienced it. So the thing that became like the most beneficial thing for my rehab often was just like taking the focus away from the injured area and seeing like, how can I make progress in a different area? And the thing is with like a lot of injuries, it's actually like letting it just take its time to heal and then giving it a good environment to heal within is the thing that makes the biggest difference more so than like, for example, a lot of manual therapy and hands on stuff, which some physios might get angry at me for saying, but like, you know, it really is that like the body's pretty good at healing and then ideally strengthening around it, giving it a good environment to heal. So there's nothing that like you can do that will make the environment for healing better than staying like metabolically healthy by recovering well. So sleeping well, managing your stress and eating really well. Um, that, yeah, that's giving your, your body the best chance to heal. It's going to be, you know, you're managing that kind of like, um, uh, systemic information, like hormonal things, like your sugar system, all of these things that like will improve its, the healing factors. And then mentally it means that you're, like with pain being your body's perception of perceived threat, if everything you do is tied around like your shoulder and that's the only thing you do and you stop doing everything else, then of course you're going to feel threatened by not making any progress, being painful whenever you try anything. Whereas by shifting the focus and, and focusing on something that you can do, it then like really has does have a positive effect on your pain experience because no longer is your shoulder pain limiting you from feeling any progress in, in, your, in your health. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know, it's funny when you said before that, that you know, hands-on and manual therapies and, and, and that sort of thing aren't the most important. What it does for me, and I, I have this, you know, this saying, which sounds terrible, but it, I, I think it's funny, which is I, I often, I, 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 and I didn't make this up. It was once said to me, I, I like to go get manual therapies because it just feels good. Like going to a, a friend who's a chiropractor and getting manipulated and, and things like that. I, I used to call that spinal masturbation because it just feels really good, you know. Uh, but, but the thing is that you get that you can't, I guess, ignore the placebo effect that you get from th those sorts of things, you know, like going to, for, for, a, for a remedial massage or getting yeah, some yeah. manual manipulation oh, done. And, and, and people who don't know my background, like I was a massage therapist for 10 years, like <laughs> hands-on yeah. therapy is like, you know, that's what I've, if I was really good at one thing, it's probably hands-on therapy. Like that's yeah, what I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had he, a lot of experience. Phil, with. Phil was the, the, the best massage in Sydney and remedial massage, you know, like we, and that's how we met. And yeah. I was devastated when he stopped practicing massage really, because I was just like, fuck, where do I go to get a good massage now? You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, he was, he was so good that I offered him to build him a clinic in our gym just to get a weekly massage for free, you know, <laughs> so he, he yeah. booked me in. <laughs> and good setup. And, and, and all my, my years of being a massage therapist and, you know, he's still doing massage therapy, like hands-on manual therapy into, you know, while I was a physio as well, like it's, there's so many positive things to come from it. And, but the misunderstanding of like that being the thing that fixes Commas, or heals the process is is just not right it's like that can again provide that optimal environment for healing if you do have some level of like muscle spasm or tightness in the area and 
probably the most important thing really is just like that therapeutic alliance you can have with a therapist. So basically like having a relationship with someone who can then give you that guide and support, keep you in the game, keep you engaged because that disengagement from health is often the reason why people, you know, fall off the, the track. So having someone who can be there, support you, make your body feel a bit better, give you some positive association. Also like pain, like is often a sensitization issue where again, if you're like got the magnifying glass on your shoulder, any sort of stimulus around your shoulder often then gets like, perceived as like a painful thing so having therapeutic touch can be like a desensitization process so there's, there's always these factors that do mean that it's worthwhile if you can avoid it but like if it's the thing if it's the only thing you do without the rest yeah, of all these it, other factors yeah, then yeah. that's where it's problematic so yeah look my point really was just to say that if it makes you feel better like if you go to someone and you get uh, dry needling or acupuncture or massage or uh, anything like that you know some people always talk to, to you know we get that many comments on our videos about have you tried using a Thames machine or a, you know, electrode stimulus, something or other, you know, or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, look, you know, if it, if it makes you feel good, then that's good. You know, because I don't know whether the, the, the whether it's actually the mechanism that's stimulating the healing process, but it, you know, there's so much of a mental component to recovering from an injury. And, you know, we spoke about this a little bit off camera and we've touched on this and, and tried to reinforce it during the episode here, but I really want everyone to understand that, your mental health during recovery is going to play a profound role in your recovery. And so if you think that you're not getting better, the chances are you're going to feel like crap. And if you start to believe that you are getting better, then you're going to feel better. And if, if it takes you going to a practitioner and then poking you with needles or something, and that's going to make you feel like there's progress, then do it, you know, and be, and, and yeah. embrace it. And again, like the, the, it's not just like a woo woo airy fairy kind of like, positive mindset and you'll be right it's like very much baked into like pain science and how how the brain and the body works like you know we've talked about how you know both like both of us have had slap tears rad has slap tear we didn't get them surgically managed and like i know that if you were to scan my shoulder today the tear would still be there there'd still be like damage to the labrum and that you know there's been time like and at the moment it is actually a bit painful because my strength training has really dropped off i'm having to like carry my 18 month old daughter in like, you know, less than ideal ways. And that's cool. And, you know, com combining that with a bit of sickness and just general like, you know, fatigue and everything, like it's been a bit angry recently, but there's also been long stretches of the last few years. And, you know, as I talked about in previous episodes about doing this bench specialization program where I was training up a body four days a week where I didn't have any pain whatsoever. And so again, I just like that idea of with pain being your body's expression of perceived threat, it's really hard like for your, to feel like you're under threat if you're feeling very strong and very capable. Like that's not the only factor that like damage you know, can in, but the key thing is like your ment mentality around your your training has such a big factor on your like recovery and, and overall well-being. And like looking at, you know, in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, there like there's been, <laughs> over the years there's been so many versions of the like ice, rice, ricer, police. Like there's just so many different injury management, different protocols to do after an injury and it's interesting now like the british journal of sports medicine like they their one now instead of rice or rice or is is peace and love and so the idea is there in the in the initial phase of an injury it's protection elevation avoiding anti-inflammatory things uh compression and, and then education around like how to manage an injury which is going to be like avoiding unnecessary treatments and understanding that healing comes from like time and optimizing the environment for healing but then or, the kind or, of longer or term watch, or watch our podcast. That's, yeah. Which is uh, that education. Yep. So <laughs> we should put a link there in the, the get British, British journal of sports medicine to chuck us in yeah, there. Yeah. But then the, so peace is that like a, acute phase and then the, the sort of longer term management, which a lot of the time, like, you know, one of their big, di like problems with the kind of rice isoprocopoles, apart from the fact that they think that anti-inflammatory is not useful in the short term because inflammation is like acute inflammation is what helps provide the healing mediators. Not a big deal if you've iced injuries in the past, we all have like not going to be the game changer, but again, looking at optimized things like actually ice is not ideal, but then yeah, so they, they've added in love as like, so in peace and love of love being like the longer term management. And so love stands for load, optimism, vascularization, and exercise. So really interesting there how like, you know, load is, is obviously like getting back to like your normal activities. Um, and then the vascularization is around like, like cardiovascular activities to then optimize your metabolic system as i talked about before and then exercise is like getting really specific about the adaptation like strength and uh, mobility adaptations you want from there but optimism like optimism is like the british journal of sports medicine is saying like 
being yep. optimistic yep. <laughs> is the best way to manage an injury. And yeah. again, that's so much part of the idea of like your pain being your perceived threat and so many chronic pain issues born out of people being so doom and gloom because they've like had this mindset of like, okay, I'm a broken person. I've got this and the injury identity as I talked about so many times before. And that partly, you know, is just like people not understanding how injuries work, which is fair enough. Not everyone's done like a lot of study in this side of things, but like often it can be from medical, like health practitioners who give you advice or words or you, you get a scan that just freaks you out. And then you're sort of like so freaked out about your body that <laughs> you can't help but feel like you're, you know, you're broken and you're not going well, to This okay. is the theme. This is the entire theme of, of our slap tear rehab blueprint that we've got live that everyone can download for free, get access to. It's a really, really great, resource but the the overarching theme of that resource is that the people that you choose the experts that you choose to guide you through this process of injury diagnosis and rehab are going to be key to your recovery because i've experienced both ends of the spectrum and so has rad and i'm sure you have too phil where you go and see someone and they basically put you in the naughty corner and 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 treat you as a compromised human for, forever after that, you, you know, yeah. and then the other side of the spectrum is that you have someone who just says, yeah, you've got this injury and we're going to do this, this, and this, and you're going to be fine. And, you know, you can choose to go and get operated on if you want, but it's not a guaranteed success rate. Uh, it, but it, you can, because you're so strong and you're already exercising, let's try just continuing to strengthen it and do some rehab. And, you know, it may never look perfect again under an MRI, but you may not no, you, yeah. you may not care, you know. And, and but yeah, if you've had someone like the classic is like, you know, you've got the spine or the knees or the hips of an eight, like a 90 year old and yeah. bone oh and all these things God. are just like, yeah. are so like threatening. And then you just feel like, you know, you're so compromised. And, and it's like, it, it's hard to undo that like initial impression. And, and just like a really personal example of this, like my dad in the last few weeks has been diagnosed with cancer, which is, you know, just such a stressful time for all of us. But the worst thing about it is that like he had a biopsy, which confirmed that, you know, there was cancer cells, but then they sent him off to do a PET scan, which is basically like looking at the whole body, seeing if it's metastasized and like spread throughout the body. And they gave him the scan, like they gave him the images and he didn't have a, like a follow up with the oncologist for another week and a half. And so he's got these like images without any report, without any context, without any support. And so of course he's like looked at them and he has no idea, like he's, you know, not, <laughs> not a radiologist, not a doctor. And he's seen things on the scan there. And he's, he, he's, you know, convinced himself that he's like riddled with cancer throughout his whole body. And fortunately, like today was when he like had the oncology appointment and they're like, you're fine. Like there's no, no spreading. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> if there yeah. is, it's, you know, like we, there's no, like, perce like we can't pick up anything here. So like we need to deal with like the area of cancer, but like you don't, don't have to worry about the rest of your body. But like he spent a week and a half just like, yeah. stewing in this idea that is just you know like and, and that's yeah. so hard to like undo <laughs> and that's where you know as like health practitioners i think there's a real responsibility of like you know you need to sort of support people th and like help them understand that and like kind of give the information in a way that is setting them up mentally to be able to tackle like the idea that you know what they can and they they can't do and what to expect in the prognosis all of those things and without that sort of support, it's just so hard. <laughs> like it's so hard on people and it's really hard to come back from that. So yeah, my, like obviously cancer is quite different to a, a, a slap tear, but like the, like un if you get a scan and you don't know what it means and you're just told like, you've got this horror, like you've got a cartilage there, like you know, people are going to freak out. And it's yeah, so important to work with people who can help you like understand the context and understand what it means. But then I think Equally importantly, is as this comment has pointed out, like it's it's so key to figure out like what can you do, what can you do to make sure you're keeping that positive, healthy momentum. What can you do to make yourself not feel like a broken person, not feel like a you know, like unable to do what you love. And it's so hard if you do have a sport that's like very shoulder dominant. But you know, for myself, like when I really, really badly injured my ankle, like I started swimming that next week, and I spent the next like six weeks swimming with a pool boy between my legs, so I couldn't kick, and then I yeah. like learned to love swimming and I just didn't even care about my elbow, I'm sorry, my ankle because I was having like such a fun experience doing this, this sort of new thing. And then my ankle's better than ever now. And like, it's, but it, like, yeah, in previous times it had been like end of the world <laughs> sort of stuff when I had a yeah. injury that significant. So, yeah. Yeah. Look, I went through something similar where I, I used to be a competitive boxer and my boxing 
gloves were hung up when I turned just, just as I was turning 30 years old after a really bad injury where I sort of tore the long head of the tricep in my right arm. And it was a bad injury. Like the, 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 the tendon where it inserts into the bone split. So I, I think they call it like a perforation or something like that. Like a, it was a, it was not like a, a, a cross-sectional tear. It yeah. was a longitudinal tear. And I, one of my attributes as a boxer was a really good overhand right, which, you know, caused a, a fair bit of stress on the tricep. So it really made boxing somewhat impossible for, for a while. And what happened at that point was that I decided to just sort of go all in on strength training, you know, with the rehab and everything. And I started to really enjoy just strength training for strength training, as opposed to doing it to complement my boxing. And, you know, I started playing soccer again and did, just did different things, you know, and, and now 14 years later, I've started boxing again just for fun, you know, for fitness. And I, I, my body feels better than ever, you know, like it's, it's yeah. taken me a while to become conditioned to it again and not have aching hands and, and wrists after hitting a heavy bag. But man, I am so much more powerful, probably a little bit, not, not as fast, but I'm 10 kilos heavier than I was. Not quite. I'm, I'm about eight kilos heavier than I was when I was competing. And yeah, look, you know, like there, there is life outside of your echo chamber of whatever you were doing when you hurt yourself and and there's a whole world out there that you can explore you know and and, and i think uh, there's sometimes just like that zooming out and looking at the component parts of like you know what's exercise for like why do you do this exercise like what is it what is it for and you know people fall in love with like a particular type of like a particular sport where there may be a skill that they've developed over time and come really good at and you know it might be the social elements of being with your team and like the status you get from being good in that thing like but i think people kind of zooming out and looking at all those component parts that like it make exercise important to you in that area and looking like okay you know it's it like i could apply like i could have that same those same enjoyment things but in other areas and often more so if, if like one of the best things for humans is progression like we love feeling progress and then something that you've done in a long time like diminishing returns is real like it's really hard to get <laughs> the more yeah. time you put into something it's so hard to get better and better so like like kind of being aware of that zooming out trying something else and then like trying to get that social side of things trying to get that level of progression trying to pursue mastery of a new skill having fun in a different sort of way being in different environments like all of these things are just you know like part of the human experience and and again i've, I've talked about this many times but like i really do like believe that you know seeing every injury as an opportunity has just been one of the most helpful beliefs that i've changed over my years of being someone very injury like i guess i say injury prone like i used to hurt myself a lot i used to have like injury identity being very wrapped up in like my life is dictated by my injuries to being someone now who's like i've had so many wonderful varied experiences different sports and um they've often been the catalyst of change has been from those injuries and so yeah it's been a cool journey yeah look absolutely and uh, hopefully we've we've convinced you that you know psychology is very important your mindset is very important in your recovery process and then on the back of that you know find the right expert if you want to work with phil you can always find him on social media at phil white physio and his website is you can bring it up on there philwhite.me which yeah, look, you know, he works online with his clients. So you've got that option. You've also got the option to come work with us, with Rad and I. We have online coaching programs for just about everything you could possibly imagine. We're not super experts at weight loss. That's not really our lane. Our lane is more in physical performance, athletic performance, things like that. But we can still certainly help you with with fat loss if that's something that you want to work with us for, you know. Other than that, thank you for joining us. If you've made it this far, that's 30 two minutes, 33 minutes of serious growth and development from a, from an injury rehab perspective. So kudos to you. You've chosen to, to join us and go beyond the plethora of social media, aimless social media scrolling and, and useless information that's out there. Thank you. Hit the like button if you got something out of this. And guys, I can't stress this enough. These, these discussions always are inspired by you know comments from our tribe on our YouTube videos and on our podcast. So please, please, please share your thoughts. And uh, and we will certainly, if we see something in there that we think we could make a, a, a good, useful discussion out of, Phil and I will chew on it and, and talk about it. Thanks, Phil. Always a pleasure. We will see you guys next week. Take care. Ciao.